Hello again and welcome back and uh, back in the weights again because it's just such a beautiful day I couldn't afford to miss this one but uh, it's been so wet recently unbelievable the amount of rain we've had it's just incredible so I wanted to take the opportunity there's a few days of cold dry weather forecast so I decided to take the opportunity to get out <coughs> excuse me so you might have guessed where I am already I've probably put some footage in before this uh, so you might have guessed where I am already but uh, look at this <laughs> look at that so I've got some plans to spend the night up there I've got all my uh, winter gear because there's a bit of weather coming in tonight although it's supposed to be a beautiful day tomorrow as well but I don't know what I'm going to get up there so I've, I've sort of brought everything and this looks like it, it's I weighed it at 17 kilos before I set off and I've put some more water and some other bits and bobs in so it must be 18 easy I'm going to try and not think about that because it is what it is and just plod on I've given myself plenty of time it's just gone 11 a.m. now so I've given myself plenty of time to get up there I reckon probably three hours um, again in these conditions if I'm gonna have to put crampons on it may take me longer than it normally would so you know I've just got to bear that in mind and um, see what I find when I get up there and make the most of it but Clouds going over Great Gable. Yeah, so enough procrastinating and looking at it. Oh, man. <laughs> Stop thinking about this blooming rucksack. Let's get on with it. Let's go. So as you probably guessed, I'm on the tourist path up to towards Scarfell Pike and a concern that I had is I've got across Green Mel Gill and with the amount of water that's been coming down over recent weeks I just wondered what it's going to be like. So I'm just getting there now. It doesn't look too bad but as they always say with this on your back, different ball game. So I'm going to use the trekking poles to get across here. Look at that though. I think I managed to get my feet dry as well. It's the last thing you need to get your feet wet so early in the, in the hike. I mean, I've got, uh, I have made preparations in case I got my feet wet, but I'd rather not. So, yeah, I'm glad we got past that, but, uh, okay. So yeah, so, just carrying on this path now. And although it's a tourist path, it's a slow, it really is. There's nothing technical about it, it's just a steep slog, but it's just the quickest way to get up to uh, Scarfell Pike, and obviously it's busy being the tourist path, but it's pretty quiet today actually, so uh, yeah, great views looking back, looks like there's a tribe coming up behind me. So I have a young lads, so I have to keep in front of them, not for sure. So I've had to stop and take my thermal top on. I've literally just got this on now because we're overheating. But I've just reached the junction of the Mickledore path. It's taken me 55 minutes, that's good going that. And it's about 1700 feet here. But I've 
I've noticed them tribesmen is catching me up, so I need to get a move on. But look at this. Stunning. Right, let's get going. Just noticed uh, first bits of snow on the path as well. It's not frozen though. I was thinking there, this is the first time I've actually ascended by this section of the tourist route. I usually cut off at Mickledore and up that way. I've come down it a few times, but uh, yeah, I never actually ascended this way. Now, there's a bit of weather forecast for this afternoon. Cloud, and then tonight, quite a bit of snow but I'm more interested in the winds they're saying about 25 mile an hour so I'm just gonna play it by here and just assess as I go so I'm just approaching Ling Mel Col now and that wind's definitely picking up so since I've only got this on um, I'm going to get some gear on I think, not, not too much because the ascent's going to be, you know, quite, uh, using quite a bit of energy on the ascent so that'll keep me warm and I don't want to start overeating and sweating. So I'm going to put my hoodie on and I can put the hood up and zip it down if I get too warm. Right, I changed my mind, I decided to put my uh, black thing on underneath this and uh, see how I get on, might need to change as I get part way up. I don't know how long this, this will take, maybe an hour, maybe less. It's two, quarter to one. We'll see how like, long it takes. Yeah, changeable. It's quite cloudy up top. And I'm going to get moving now because I'm getting uh, a bit cold. Get these gloves on. Let's go. I just passed a young lad there and he, oh, his face was busted open. He's fallen further up there and might even have broken his nose. His face was full of blood. He said it was alright, he was with some other lads. But uh, yeah, need to be careful. But as you can see, I'm heading into the mist now. And uh, this is the slabby section um, on this tourist path. If there's ice on this, it'd be lethal that. So as I said, I do have crampons with me for tomorrow because I am expecting conditions to be quite different in the morning. But uh, anyway, we'll keep going. So here we are, made it. England's highest mountain, and it's 12 minutes past one. I set off at 10 past 11. That's pretty good, that. Two hours. Please do that. Carrying this as well. So, so I'm going to get some shells, I think, now, and have something to eat. Whoops, freezing up. And um, then think about where I'm going to pitch. I've got some ideas, but I just don't know what the terrain's going to be like, so I'm going to have to weigh it up. Um, and just have a look around, I think. Anyway, let's get out this wind, get something to eat. Right, I just dropped off the summit. So it's just uh, quite busy actually, but uh, looking for somewhere to pitch now. I did have views, but I've had to stop and change the battery and the views have literally just gone. Fingertips are absolutely freezing. Oh man, 
So, I literally, I can't tell if this is level or not because it's all white. It's sort of, you can't tell which is up and down. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I need to get my fingers back because they're bloody killing me. Um, yeah, so I'm, I might have a try at something here actually. Just there in that snow. But uh, yeah, it's absolutely bitter. So I'm going to stop filming and um, see if I can have a go up in the tent up, I think. In this wind as well, the wind's picking up. But it was forecast to be like this, so just have to make the best of it. Right, let's get on with it. Well, I finally got pitched up. That was a bit of a palaver. I uh, I really struggled with the, I've got standard pegs, and uh, I also brought six of those MSI Blizzard, sorry, my lips are freezing up. MSI Blizzard, the big red um, wide ones, and I could have done with more of them, really. I've had to bury them in the snow sideways, and uh, bury them in the snow and get the tension on the guys that way. I've also used some rocks and um, and my trekking poles as well. So that's the summit up there, the Scarfell Pike, and that's the pitch. Really pleased with it though. Now that I've eventually got pitched, um, the views are just coming and going. But uh, once we get the views, they're absolutely gorgeous. But it's, uh, it is forecast to be like this pretty much all this, all this afternoon and then there's snow coming tonight. But yeah, please with this. I've not sorted it out inside yet. Still got that to do. Look at this. Brilliant. We just where we pitched here, it's just above Dropping Crag it's called. On the sort of northern side of Scarfell Pike. Wow. Yeah, I'm pleased with that though. So I'm gonna have to put you away for a bit and uh, sort the inside of my tent out, see what time it is. Ten past three. Summit was quite busy earlier, but everyone seems to have gone now, which is uh, probably wise because another hour or so it's going to be dark. Yeah, but it's it's quiet now. That wind's dropped, but I'm expecting it to pick up a bit later. God, my lips can't even speak. <laughs> right, let's get this tent sorted out inside. Right, so I've got all my stuff out now, and it's uh, again it's clouding in a bit but uh, I think I'm gonna get my thermals on now so you were asking me about this jacket last time it's a mountain equipment light line jacket I get that on I've got my Rab Argon down pants got them uh, long john thermal things that go underneath them and uh, that's about it really just realised I've forgotten my charger uh, lead for my phone. Brought the charger power bank. Forgotten the lead, so I just have to be careful not to use all my battery up. Um, yeah, but I'm going to get changed now. I'm starting to get a bit chilly now. I'm sat here doing nothing. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's good though. Really good. Still a few people um, reaching up to the summit. Right, anyway, let's get changed. Just had a walk back to the uh, the uh, path to see if you can see my tent, and you can't. You certainly can't see it from here anyway. It's just four o'clock now, and with this cloud coming, in, it's getting quite dark. I just want to see where, at what point, you can see my tent. <laughs> Not far from the summit, it's only sunny there. But, uh, still can't see it. Ah, I can see it now. Just there. I think it's pretty much this for the rest of the night. It's great to be up here though. And it's great when you come to spend the night in places like this. It just gives you time to sort of settle in and, and look around and explore the place and get a real feel for it. When you just come up for, you know, for the day just to touch the summit and walk back down again, you just I don't know, you seem to bond with a place when you spend the night here. I always say, you don't get to know a mountain until you spend the night on the mountain. And uh, this is my favorite mountain, well, Scarfell and Scarfell Pike, so great to be up here again. I've spent, this is the second night, of second camp I've done here. I did one at Mickle Door, I've camped on Scarfell twice. So yeah. Great I love it. So let's just have to see what temperature we've got. I think it's about minus one. <sighs> yep, minus one. Got my gear on now so I feel miles better. all good. See this is where I've had to use the rocks. Some there as well. There. It seems pretty good. I've just retentioned the guy lines and I'll do it again later before I get settled in, make sure it's all nice and nailed down. Yeah so I want to make a brew actually. I haven't done a brew yet. And uh, sun sets in about 45 minutes. Wind's picking up. It's supposed to be, I just checked the forecast, and there's supposed to be snow about 9 o'clock tonight. Um, but it's not clearing. According to the latest forecast, it's not clearing until about 10 a.m. tomorrow. But I'm not rushing away tomorrow morning. Hopefully, I can hang around and, and get some views tomorrow morning. No rush to get back. Right, let's get the kettle on. So here we are, a brew with no view, but who cares? Got my uh, 
I like up, up above 3,000 feet on a mountain for the first time. That's the thing I wanted to do with this. All, all my tents, I've had them to 3,000 feet. So now, although it's a new tent for me, it's only my third outing, but we're at 3,000 feet. Just a little thing that I have going with myself. Um, just a bit of fun, it challenges me to do different things. So yeah, more than happy. Cheers. Right, so I've just come outside to have a see what's going on. I've got my light on so I can't see a bloody thing, but hopefully you can see. Um, the wind has just dropped to nothing at all, and it's absolutely so clear. I don't know if you can see any of that, but it's so clear up in the sky tonight. I've taken a few pictures, but nothing does it justice. You've just got to be here. It's absolutely incredible. If you can see any of that. Yeah, my God. And um, that bit of snow that came earlier, just see it on the tent there. But there's just no wind at all, so it's perfect conditions. I'll just check the forecast because I've got a signal and the forecasting 30 miles an hour winds tomorrow morning about in the early hours at 6 a.m. So hopefully they get that wrong. <laughs> um, and the temperature drops to a minimum by then, it's saying minus seven. See what it is at the minute. Showing minus 3.8 at the minute. But as I've said before, when there's no wind, you can, it's, it's okay. It's the wind that makes all the difference. Actually, I, th I thought there might be some people coming up here tonight, but no, I haven't heard no one. Ah, yeah, just taking it all in this night sky. Incredible. And the Milky Way, the Milky Way is right across there. I can see that as well. It's just beautiful. Right, back to you in a bit. Just having a look outside now. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. So still. And that uh, that mist coming now, as you can see. But it's still beautiful. And silent. No wind. No snow, nothing. So that wind's picking up now and it's, it's actually started snowing. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to show you a couple of new pieces of gear that I've got. In this video at the beginning, you'll, you'll see sort of banner in the corner of the screen and it says includes paid promotion. I just want to make it clear that I do not get paid for any of these companies that I've, I mentioned in my videos. Um, what they normally do, they'll send me something for free that I can show you guys. And uh, Flextail Gear got in touch with me. They'd seen my videos and they asked me if I'd like to try out one of their new pumps. Now I've been using their little uh, pump for pumping up my uh, mats. I've been using it for about 18 months. I absolutely love it. So I said, yeah, definitely. I mean, I didn't need one because I've already got one. But I thought it was uh, a great opportunity to be able to show you guys and then get a discount code as well. So if you fancy one, you can use a discount code and save a bit of money. So 
they've sent me this which is the tiny pump 2x i think it's called i put all the details in the description and um, it's very similar to one that i've been using previously seems a bit quicker when i've used it earlier um, but uh, yeah so it's a little pump but it, i also use it as a light as well there's a three stage light so i hang that up from uh, top of my tent there really good light and, and it, the battery seems to last ages I and mean, once i've pumped my mat up I don't use it again, so I just use it as the light. But they're absolutely brilliant. It, when I first saw them, I thought, oh, I, don't, I don't want anything like that. And then I used it, and I thought, my God, I've got to get one of them. So, yeah, I'll put the details in the description. Um, they do them in, I got a black one, but they do do them in different colours. And you can also use it to deflate your mat as well, like, a bit like a vacuum pump. So they can pump pressure and, and back as well. So, yeah, brilliant. Check it out in the description and uh, if you fancy one, use a discount code as well. So Flextail also sent me this pillow that they do. It's an inflatable pillow called the Zero Pillow. And it's like ergonomically designed so that it supports your neck really well. So again, I didn't need one, but I thought I'd try it. And um, I haven't even opened it as you can see, so I don't know if it's any good or not. But I'll try it tonight and, and again you get the bid. Uh, link in the description with a discount code so if it's you know if it's good you can get some discount on one of these too um, as I say stuff stuff that I tell you guys about if I if I've no interest in it I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you guys I get contacted every week by loads of different companies and most of it I, I don't even bother with but um, this I thought yeah it's stuff that I like so I'm gonna let you know about it maybe you can save a bit of money as well so I'll get this uh, pumped up later, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know in the morning how it is. I haven't brought the right attachment for uh, for this, but um, there's loads of different types of attachments that you can get come included with a pump. So I'm sure they fit just about pretty much anything, but I only brought the correct one for my sleeping mat, but I'll see how I get on with this anyway. Well, that's it pumped up see the ergonomic design there and there's a little uh, strap there as well for attaching it to your sleeping pad yeah so i'm going to try that tonight and see uh see what i think and I'll, then i'll let you know in the morning it feels nice and soft and it packs down really small lightweight but uh i'll put all the stats on the description as well but yeah looking forward to trying that looks good but uh you may be able to hear now and see it's snowing nice morning it's uh, quarter past six now I've made a just realized I've made a bit of a rookie mistake here because I was just lying there I thought I'm feeling quite cold and I'm not normally cold and my sleep system has not changed or anything but uh, the winds picked up and I can hear the snow sliding off the tent um, but yes yeah, so I, I was feeling quite cold so I've woken up put the light on and uh, I realised I had the vents open to let a bit of air flow through the tent. That's why I'm cold. Because all the snow's been blowing inside the tent and it's all over my I mean, quilt. But we can learn, don't we? But yeah, so 
it's quarter past six and uh, that wind's supposed to be picking up. It is forecast to pick up. Um, I haven't walked outside yet, I shut the door, it must have been about two o'clock, I shut the door. Yeah, you can hear the snow sliding off the tent. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's another couple of hours before it comes light. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna flick this snow off. It's all there as well. And, um, we'll be able to try and dry out a bit. Oh, this is something I wanted to mention to you, because, um, as I say, I watched the forecast and I thought I'm gonna be probably stuck in the tent for some of the night and um, I brought this pea bottle because as I've, I think I've mentioned these before you know the last thing I want to do now is start getting out the tent I'll have to because it's snowing and I have to get all my gear on get out the tent get wet then get back in again and it's, it's just the right hassle so yeah get yourself one of these not used it yet obviously <laughs> but I'm gonna um, just makes it so easy and not having to get out the tent in especially in bad weather I don't know if you can see, but I've uh, got some condensation on the inner tent and um, it's pretty much a fact of life really, especially in winter because because the tent's low right down to the ground and, it, and there'll be snow ramped up against the side of the tent so it just reduces ventilation and also because I've got blowing snow I've had to close the vents, should have closed them earlier, but uh, and then condensation just a fact of life, it's just something you've got to deal with really. Um, that wind's certainly picking up now there's no point in even having a look outside because it's pitch black won't be able to see anything and there's probably a bit of a not a blizzard but blowing snow so you just can't see a thing so I'm just going to sit tight for a bit and uh, once it starts coming a bit light I'll have a look out yeah condensation I don't tend to worry about it it's just one of those things you've got to you've got to manage it as best you can but it's just a it's just a fact of life when there's no airflow. Yeah, it's just gone 7 a.m. now and uh, things aren't really changing much. That wind's getting up. Tent's doing great though. It's been it's had some fair old gusts coming through. It just sort of rocked it and shrugged it off. So let's hope, <laughs> let's hope it stays like that. But um, yeah, they're certainly not certainly not conditions for beginners. These you need to know what you're doing. That's for sure. And you know, as I keep saying, you need to have built up your experience. And uh, I think a lot of it is is a mindset, a mindset as well. You know, you don't want to be panicking in these sort of situations. You need to be thinking things through. I've been thinking about um, how I'm going to pack up, um, and then once I've got everything packed up in the rucksack inside the tent, I need to stay out this weather as long as possible. So then I'm thinking about taking the tent down. And I'm thinking about the walk back. If the conditions are like this, what kit will I need to walk back in? So I don't need to, I don't want to be packing that. And then the crampons, will I need crampons or not? What I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna probably put the crampons on anyway inside my tent. Um, and then if I don't need them, I can take them off. But if I do need them, they're already on. What I don't want to do is, is pack the crampons, start walking down, then need the crampons on start putting them on in these conditions it's just horrendous so you know, you've got to think things through like that um, and that it all comes with experience um, you know I've got things wrong today myself even though I've got quite a bit of experience I've left the vents open and all the snow blew on the uh, on my uh, sleeping bag so you know you're always learning um, you just got to keep getting out keep learning but uh, you know, people poo-poo the Lake District in these sort of conditions, say, oh, it's only the Lake District, it's not the Himalayas, but these are life-threatening conditions, there's no two ways about it, and the last thing I want to do is have to drag Mountain Rescue up here just to save save me, who's just come up to a bit of mountain camping, you know what I mean? 
I do this at my own risk and we all do but you've got to be sensible about it and not put other people at risk as well um, so yeah you know it, it's a dangerous place up here in these conditions people die in the Lake Districts every year so you've got to you've got to bear that in mind and not take unnecessary risks oh I said I was going to tell you about the pillow didn't I it's actually been good um, a few comments I don't use that strap I mean it works obviously but because I'm a side sleeper I have this this pillow just goes all over the place I'll try and show you I often sleep like this um, so it's comfortable and I'll definitely be using it again but you know I don't that's how it's designed to be slept like that and I don't often sleep on my back I do sometimes but uh, I, I move it round all ways I sleep like I sleep like that you know what I mean so if you're a side sleeper it, it does still work because you can just move it around a bit what would be what would be better for me I think if it had a bit of a scoot out bit for your neck my, my other one it sort of scoots out round there but hey yeah no I like it and I'll definitely be using it again so uh Check out the link in the description to uh, Flex Tail, and the the light will be in there as well. And uh, hopefully, you can save yourself a bit of cash if you want one of the the light or the uh, or the pillow. I'm looking forward to having a look outside but north is that way and the wind is blowing from the north which is this way and as soon as I open that door it, all the snow comes in so yeah so I'm, I'm not really opening the door for a bit yet at least until it comes light and then I know I can see something
that's cold. Minus 16, I think, that in the wind chill. Gorgeous though. The speed of these clouds moving along. rising over that direction but uh, can't see anything with all this spin drift So I've just been wandering around on the snow with these uh, booties on. But uh, I'm gonna have a walk up to the summit now and you, there's no way you can wear these booties if you can't see what's on the ground because there's sharp rocks everywhere and they just go straight through these and you, you'd injure your foot pretty badly as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try and get my frozen boots on and we'll have a walk up to the summit.
So that's the tent packed away now. Just got to get everything in the rucksack. Leave no traces always. I've put the rocks back over there. Got it. Wild, mate. Wild. Minus 9.5 on, the, uh, on my thermometer. Bloody hell. Anyway, I'm going to get this stuff in the rucksack and get the hell off of this mountain. I've just, uh, just come down what was the final ascent to the Scarfo Pike. My God, so little wind here, it's brilliant. Hands are absolutely freezing, even with the mittens on. I keep having to take the gloves off to be op to operate the GoPro mat because I can't do it without with the gloves on. Hands are absolutely freezing. But I tell you what, Alaman's there and there's there's definitely snow on top of the mountains. But uh, yeah, I, didn't, I don't think I really needed the camp crampons. It's just dry powder and you, you just sink into it. I've been up above my knees at some places. Um, God, yeah. What an awesome camp that was. Absolutely awesome. I've always wanted to do that in winter. And uh, it was just such a privilege, an absolute privilege to spend my, the night on my favorite mountain had it all to myself and then the morning as well the sunrise it was just absolutely incredible really was so I'm feeling so good about that I'm just looking up there to Simmons Knot now wow I carried the drone up and all the batteries and back there's no way I could get the drone out in these conditions what 40 mile an hour winds no chance whatsoever Uh, this is the actual path but oh, as you can see it's all covered in drifted snow which doesn't support your weight you just sink into it and if there's rocks underneath it you can do yourself an injury as well I'm just going to keep these crampons on just for a bit more grip Oh God. And this is the path. I was just thinking when I was in my tent last night, I was just thinking the past three weeks, I've summited three of the four 3,000 foot mountains in England. And that's just Scarfell there. I summited uh, Helvellyn with Andy Beavers and um, I went up Skidor, you'll see my video up Skidor. There's Scarfell, which I haven't done in the past three weeks where I've done it, camped up there as well. So yeah, that was good that.
I'm not a fan of this path at the best of times, but it's bloody lethal today. You just can't see what's underneath the snow. But we've got that, haven't we? Seems a shame to be leaving it behind, but uh, what can you do? There's always another time. Not a bad view looking west. You can actually see the Isle of Man there, and there's snow on Snaefell, is it the highest peak in the Isle of Man? Yeah, beautiful. This path is absolutely bloody treacherous. It's because of this powdery snow you can't see what's underneath underneath it. Oh god. The crampons won't Crampons won't be any good, it'd just probably be a hindrance, you'd be tripping over them. Oh. Gonna be aching tomorrow, that's for sure. When you start walking, winter walking, after you've been summer walking, you, you're just really tense in your muscles. Oh. Wearing different boots as well. Just changes your weight, the way that you walk and it affects different muscles so I'll be aching tomorrow. I'm aching already. <laughs> it's actually easier coming down this, this type of path. Sorry going up. If you're going up you're gonna fall up. Worse falling down than falling up. So I'm probably only about half an hour to uh, the car park now, so I think it's a opportune moment to sign off and not a bad uh, view either. Um, so I really hope you've enjoyed that one. I certainly have. I mean, it's been it's been really tough, but uh, you know, some new new records for me. Um, great to get the Al up to 3,000 feet. I say all my tents. It's my little challenge I set myself. All my tents have to go up 3,000 feet, so I've done that and some extremes this morning that I've not experienced before. I think that was a, a record temperature for me, minus nine point something. I'll confirm it when I get back. Um, what else was there? Um, wind chill, minus 18. I like in 40 mile an hour winter winds. It did absolutely fine. Um, snow loading on the Alak as well, great. So some real some real positives for me I'm going to take from that but the, the most important thing for me was just spending the night on my favourite mountain having it all to myself and it was just the peace and solitude was just incredible so yeah hope you've enjoyed it get in the comments if you've got anything to say about the video if you've got any advice for me too I always appreciate that and um, I look forward to seeing you in the next one see ya